with an identity. And in fact, it's an associative algebra. So let me give you an example. Uh, so if you take V to be one dimensional, so R1, then uh, what we see is that the Clifford, Clifford algebra of R1 is generated by two elements, one and E, and a modulo the relations, and the relation is E squared equals minus one, but this is clearly just the algebra of complex numbers. So something that you uh, know and love. Okay, so maybe one more example. Uh, if you take V to be R2, now you will have three generators, right? One, E1, and E2. Uh, but you will have also the third one, which is a product of E1 and E2. So uh, all in all, you will have three generators. And what this gives you is the algebra of quaternions. So again, this is something that we know very well. OK, with this at hand, uh, I will use the following definition. So a vector bundle E together with a connection A is called a Dirac bundle. If uh, the following conditions are satisfied, so first of all, E and Nabla are Euclidean. That is, I have a scalar product on each fiber of E, and Nabla uh, respects the scalar product. And I also have a homomorphism from Tm into the endomorphisms of E, uh, which extends to the uh, homomorphism of algebras, so Clifford Tm into the endomorphisms of M. Now what this actually means is that uh, whenever I have uh, a tangent vector V in Tm, so I map this into, say, rho of V in the endomorphisms of E, and the requirement is that rho of V squared is uh, minus norm of V squared times identity. <coughs> and the third condition is that, uh, you know, this structure of the Clifford module is uh, preserved by the uh, connections that we have. So that is nabla of V dot S is nabla V times S plus V times nabla S. All right, so uh, what I mean by this, so here V is a local or, or a vector field. Uh, so this is a section of Tm. Uh, and nabla of V denotes the levi civita connection. So if you wish, this is the levi civita connection applied to V. OK, what is it good for? Uh, this is good for the following thing. So uh, if I have a structure of a Dirac module, uh, I, have, I can define uh, the Dirac operator. So here is the definition. Um, now, I choose a local frame, E1, Vn, with the local frame for Tm, or let's say some open subset U, then the Dirac operator applied to S is just a sum. What I take, I take the covariant derivative of S with respect to this uh, vector, so say uh, Ei, I take Ei and Clifford multiply with this covariant derivative, and I do this for all frames from one to n. Now let me give you uh, one example of this. 
um, we could take E to be the exterior uh, power of the cotangent bundle to M, and I have a map from Tm into, uh, well, endomorphism of this bundle. Uh, so if I take, you know, a one form, so not necessarily a one form, just a differential form of any degree, uh, and I have a tangent vector V, so I can map this into uh, V. So uh, if I Clifford multiplies this with omega, this is, so uh, I first dualize, I think of V as a one form, and I take the batch product with omega, minus, I, uh, I substitute V into omega. So you can easily compute that I will, that if I will apply a Clifford multiplication in this form to uh, my given form omega twice, uh, I will have this property. And so we can compute the corresponding uh, Dirac operator, and this happens to be, uh, so in this particular case, D is just D plus D star. Again, something that you know very well. Right, uh, so this uh, demonstrates that uh, we have got something reasonable to study. And the basic uh, property of uh, a Dirac operator is the so-called Weizenberg formula. Theorem. And it tells us that if you square the Dirac operator, this is the connection Laplacian, I will define this in a minute, plus some algebraic operator uh, R. So where, what is? R of S, this is just sum uh, EI EJ, Clifford multiplied with the curvature uh, of Nabla evaluated at EI EJ and applied to S. So I and J is from 1 to N. Now the formula itself maybe is not very important. What is important is that R is a zero sort of operator. This is an algebraic thing. And what is this one? Uh, so nabla star nabla is just some nabla e i nabla e i applied to S minus nabla nabla e i e i applied to S. And i is from 1 to n. In other words, so if you ignore this term, so this is the first order, the, the main term is this one of the second order, well, you clearly see this is just a Laplacian here. Right now, uh, what this formula, the Weissenberg formula, tells you essentially is that the square of the Dirac operator is a Laplacian plus an algebraic term. So something that physicists were looking for uh, for many years. All right. Are there any questions to that? Uh, in here? Uh, in here. Yeah. Uh, of this bundle. Okay, in the remaining time, I wanted to uh, discuss a bit uh, a particular example of the Dirac operator that we will need in the sequel. And this is related to the uh, notion of a spin group and a spin structure.
So <coughs> what we know or what uh, can be computed is that uh, the fundamental group of the group SON is in fact Z mod 2Z, so it's just a fact if you wish. Uh, but this implies that there is a group which double covers uh, SON, so uh, there exists a group spin N uh, such that this is a double cover of SON when, well, this is 2 to 1. And I have to require here that N is at least 3, because for N equals 2, this works a little uh, differently. In any case, uh, and, and this group spin N uh, is defined by this property uh, uniquely, so uh, if this covering is non-trivial. So let me give you an example. Now let us take N to be three. Right, we can consider the group SP1, which is just a group of uh, quaternions of unit lengths. And I claim there is a homomorphism into SO3 which works as follows, so if I have Q here, I can map it into uh, the map X goes to Q, X, Q bar, where X is an imaginary quaternion, and so I can think of this as a vector in R3. Right, you can easily check that this is an uh, or, uh, orthonormal transformation of R3, and this gives us a map from SP1 into SO3, so topologically this is uh, the three sphere, and so we know that this is simply connected, and we also see that minus one here goes to the identity transformation, so it has a kernel plus minus one, and then uh, you can check that this is a non-trivial, well, it must be a non-trivial cover. And also in dimension four, the spin four group can be constructed uh, explicitly. So again, we have sp1 times sp1 into so4. So uh, here to distinguish two copies of sp1, I will endow one with a uh, plus uh, subscript, subscript and a minus subscript. Now if you have two quaternions, q plus and q minus, I can send this to a map x goes to q plus x q minus bar, where x is now a quaternion. Again, you can uh, easily check that this is an uh, orthonormal transformation of a four-dimensional space. So we have a map from uh, this group into SO4, uh, and minus one, minus one, so the diagonal minus one goes clearly to the identity element. So again, this is uh, a map two to one, uh, and therefore, and this is again simply connected, right? So this is just topologically S3 cross S3. In other words, so what we have shown is that the group spin three is SP1, and this is just the same as SU2 and the group spin four is sp1 times sp1. Well, that's fairly concrete. Uh, in general, uh, what you have is uh, the group spin n can be defined to be the group generated by elements of the form Vi, Vj, inside the Clifford algebra of Rn, uh, but you know, uh, these are vectors in Rn of length one. So, okay, but uh, you, uh, you know, the general dimension won't concern us too much. We will focus more on dimension four, where we have extremely explicit uh, construction of the group spin n. Now, uh, for this group, I have two representations, rho plus 
and rho minus into SU2. So if you wish plus and SU2 minus, this is just, uh, well, uh, forgetting one of those factors and uh, again, forgetting uh, the other factor. And this gives me two vector bundles, uh, well, not yet. Uh, now, let me say that M is called spin if uh, there exists a bundle P, so this is a spin N bundle over M such that uh, we have a two to one covering P of the principal bundle of orthonormal frames of M. So uh, a spin structure, so such a spin uh, bundle P may or may not exist. So for instance, in dimension three, any manifold is spin. In dimension four, uh, CP2 is not a spin manifold. Right, so uh, it may or may not exist, as I said, but let us assume it does exist. Uh, then uh, these two representations, rho plus and rho minus, give me two uh, vector bundles, S plus minus. So this is just P times, uh, you know, rho plus minus C2. So these are uh, Hermitian rank two vector bundles. But more importantly, what you can check is that the, uh, we have a map from GM into uh, the space of homomorphism from S plus to S minus. And this, in fact, extends to uh, a homomorphism of Clifford algebras. In fact, what I'm saying is that uh, if you take the bundle S, which is S plus plus S minus, this is a Clifford bundle. So uh, to have a Clifford bundle, uh, I need to have a connection on this bundle. So uh, where do I get a connection here? Well, this is very simple. Uh, if I have a spin structure, I have a two to one covering uh, over the principal bundle of orthonormal frames. Here I have the levi civita connection, so I can pull it back uh, to the bundle P, and this is again a connection on this bundle, thanks to the uh, fact that the Lie algebras of spin N and SO N are just the same. Right, uh, if I have this, now the corresponding Dirac operator is of the form zero, zero, D plus, D minus, we'll put slashes everywhere. And the Weissenberg formula in this case is uh, D minus applied after D plus applied to some spin or psi. Uh, so this is now a section of S plus is nabla star nabla applied to psi plus one fourth of the scalar curvature of the metric G times psi. So as I said, this is a scalar 
curvature. So in particular, uh, <coughs> if you have a metric of a positive scalar curvature, this formula implies that there are no harmonic spinners. Right? Something that uh, has certain consequences. Um, right, so, uh, so uh, this, is a, uh, this is a question about representations. Uh, so what I'm saying is that uh, if you view S plus as a representation of uh, spin four and S minus as a representation of spin four, then the uh, homomorphism is just a uh, is a complexification of the canonical representation of spin four. Uh, through SO4. And this actually tells you that there is such an isomorphism. There is a, such a homomorphism. I mean, you can do this also explicitly, but this is a sort of a very quick way to see that there is such a uh, essentially unique homomorphism. Uh, okay, uh, let me uh, discuss quickly one uh, variant of this. So if you have a spin structure, what you can do, uh, you can twist S plus uh, by a Hermitian line bundle and also by, uh, S minus by a Hermitian line bundle. Uh, and this, you, this gives you uh, the uh, twisted Dirac operator, which is defined just by the same formula, uh, meaning that uh, you know, if you have a connection A on uh, L, a Hermitian connection on L. So this gives you a connection uh, together with the levi chivita connection on these bundles. And again, uh, you have a Dirac uh, bundle and you can apply the same rule. Uh, and in this case, the Weissenberg formula is dA minus dA plus applied to psi is nabla A star nabla A applied to psi plus one fourth of the scalar curvature applied to psi and one extra term which is the self dual part of the curvature Clifford multiplied with psi. Now, <coughs> uh, what is important to realize here is that um, we have here something which is known as a spin C structure, which is essentially just a pair of uh, vector bundles. I will still denote them by S plus and S minus. So these are permission rank two bundles uh, such that the second exterior power of S plus is the, uh, the same as the second exterior power of S minus, right? In the case of the spin uh, manifold, this would be trivial, but for, uh, we can generalize this to a more general setting where this is non-trivial bundle. And uh, we have a bundle homomorphism into hom S plus S minus, again, this extends, you know, in the usual way to the uh, homomorphism of Clifford algebras. And uh, we have the corresponding Dirac operator. So, but the point is that, so here is a fact, uh, any oriented, uh, well, Romanian, any closed 
oriented to many and four manifold. Admit a spin C structure. Right, so not any four manifold is spin, uh, but there is always at least one spin C structure. And in fact, what you can uh, show is that uh, the set of all spin C structures, so let me denote this by S of M, is an H2 M Z or so. So what this means is the following. Once I have uh, a pair of Hermitian rank two bundles uh, with this property, I can always take uh, a Hermitian line bundle and twist my bundles with this Hermitian line bundle. And this will give me another spin C structure. Spin C structure. And I, if I will apply any uh, line bundles that I have to, to my disposal, I will get all spin C structures at my, uh, on my manifold M. Right? This means that I have an action of H2 on this set, and this action is uh, first of all free and transitive. Right? This is what uh, uh, torsor means. OK, so this will be a basic input for the uh, zyberg witten theory, something that we will discuss in the uh, last two lectures. Uh, the next two lectures will be essentially about analysis, so something which is not necessarily connected to the material uh, of the last two lectures, uh, as I have said in the beginning. This will give us sort of a tool by which we will study the zyberg witten equations. OK, but that's all I wanted to tell you today. Thank you.